Guys, welcome. Welcome. Cards boy, moon operator. Welcome to the stream. Uh, it's a bop. This is a... That tune you heard was made by my buddy Andy. Sometimes comes by the stream. My right, guys, welcome. Um, okay, we'll just get right into it because I think there's there's a bit of work here tonight. Um, so, uh, just an, a quick overview of what's going on. Um, this guy we're gonna rebuild, um, and we're gonna we're gonna test a few things out before we go. But right now, this is a, a build. Just a, a 60% in a cheap plastic case. I like the cheap plastic case for the sound. Um, Brown Alps in here, um, but we're going to rebuild this with some Blue Alps as well as a PETG plate, uh, clear flexible plastic plate. Um, the Blue Alps are in this keyboard. Um, I think this one's a really nice looking keyboard, but I think the build in it is just terrible um, in terms of you know, just, just everything about it. Uh, plate's kind of fucked up. Um, the sound, I, I just don't think this whole combination of things works. So this whole thing right here that you see is gonna eventually visibly look the same way, but the build's just gonna be different in it. Um, but we need to desolder all the blue alps in here and put them into here. But before we do that, I'm going to take this and then just throw this in here, like this assembly of, of blue alps and just throw it in here, just rest it in there and just type on it and see how it feels um, and, and sounds. And we'll just kind of see how, how things go. Um, so, so that's the rundown. Um, Spelunk Punk Moon Operator, thank you for redeeming those things. Um, let me let me go and grab a couple of these. Uh, we got four tonight. Uh, one of them I actually have seen, technically already open, but you guys haven't seen it. So I just want to be able to show that off. Uh, should all of them be redeemed. So, number one. Package number one. Oh, we got all of them redeemed. All right. Package number one, we got here. Um, if y'all could see this. I've never seen this, or like I've never used this before, but I always used to hear about it a lot back in the day. This right here is some RO59 lube. It's like a dry lubricant. I used to hear about this a lot, um, but I've, I've never tried it. So we finally have it in hand. Um, I'm going to be throwing this onto a uh, some green alps, actually. Green alps are eventually what's going to go into this, this guy right here, but um, I'm going to need to try to lube this. And I think what's weird is that like, Lubing with RO59 or any other dry lubricant is weird. Is it a powder? Um, well, take a look at this. Uh, I might need to underexpose. It appears to be like a liquid, like a really, really thin liquid. But this says right here, shake well. So you shake it, it becomes liquid. Yes, yeah, so I've never, you know, I don't really know much much about this, but we'll we'll try and see how this works. So um, what I hear is that, like, I, I mean, using something like R five nine is a little bit different because apparently you have to like do it in passes, like do it in layers and do it in passes. On top of that, like, I've never actually lubed Alps before, so I'm guessing. I don't know if you have to lube or like to to lube both sides. I, I guess you would. Um, so it's like if I do it like three uh, three times on each side, it's gonna take like what six days to, to do this, which is gonna be a little bit annoying. Epsilon keyboards, uh, you know, came in hot at one point. Um, I think with a, with a raid last week, and he was mentioning that he just uses a spray lube, um, but. I think I just wanted an excuse to actually go and get this because I've never had this before. Um, so I, I'll just, we'll kind of see. We'll see the difference um, when it happens. Some good lubing tips in the Keep Me Up Discord. All right. I got to I gotta check it out. By the way, um, thanks for, for dropping that nugget of uh, the PCBs earlier. I appreciate that. I, um, you know, I was out, um, but I still ended up, uh, you know, being able to pick up two. I also picked up uh, some... Salmon Alps, I believe. 
or I think it was orange. I think I, I ended up getting the orange. Uh, let me just go ahead and check that. What did I actually get? Yeah, 70 orange alps. Tactile, so. Gotta come, yeah, I appreciate it. Wet lube stay wet. Dry lube often goes on wet, but then dries on the parts been applied to. Right on, okay. Cool, cool. Okay, so um, let's let's just go dive straight into this because you know this is all gonna have to happen. Uh, little kit here. So this is apparently still on. Um, just just as an FYI, like so again, I I think that this is a really pretty build. This is um AEK um you know keycaps. Whoops, AEK keycaps on top of uh, a stainless steel plate that's too thick for Alps. Um, and this is inside of a, oops, I don't know if you guys can see that. This is a Hammerworks case from about 2013 or so. It's like a classic tray mount case. I think people really like this. Um, as far as I understand, this is the same hammer that now does CRP. He apparently, I think, did like a TKL case at some point, but um, yeah, this is, oops, a bunch of things popping off here. Um, this is, uh, you know, an older, an older tray mount setup. So that's real cool. All right. Gel 760G is pretty, a pretty good lube too. Lube my orange alps with them and they feel pretty nice. Okay. Right on. Okay. This should be completely out. Um, trying to see if I can recall where the others are. How many total screws are there? So there's one, two, three, four, five, and then I think the sixth one I never actually put in. Like the raw aluminum look, right on. <laughs> Does it hammer nails? Uh, <laughs> I mean, anything can. It just takes a little ambition. Alrighty. Again. Right to it, because we got kind of a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on today. I like these magnetic screws. Come on, man. This guy won't come out so easily. Weezers. Why oh, this one's so stubborn? I don't know. That should be it. Oh, this guy comes out. So as you can see, one of the reasons this build so scuffed is because this is a plate that I cut this time, about this time last year, maybe even more than a year ago. Um, Alps clips don't stay in place. Um, curve was just kind of too much, so or. Not enough, I guess. So, a little messed up. Um, sucks that it happened to, to sort of be that way, but that's how it is. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. This is, yeah, this is the hammer case just kind of by itself here. I don't know if y'all can see that. Yeah, it's just shining too much. My hands are full. All right. Um, continuing along. Okay, um, I'm guessing these screws are in the same spot, so we'll just pull all the same exact keycaps off. Uh, I'm gonna try to not pull off that space bar because I don't need to. Shouldn't need to at least. But of course these screws are not magnetized. Goodness. There we go. First screw. Four more to go. Ah. 
I still need to find me about 15 or so brown alps so that I could have a second brown alps build. Wait, so Splunk Punk, you said you ended up getting a, a video writer. And I was doing like a little digging on it and I realized like, shit, how do you know whether or not video writers come with brown alps? Because it seems like there's like certain variants that just come with like some some cheap rubber domes like how did you how did you become certain um i know that there's a bunch like on ebay but like i guess like so, like a couple like they had some keycaps popped off and you can tell it's not brown alps but outside of that a little worried all right so this is the first experiment just toss this in here, if we can. So I, I don't even know if I need to screw it. I'm not going to lie. I still kind of hate it. <laughs> oh, I realized I don't think you guys can even hear this. Um, So this is literally just the build. Um, what do you mean? Okay, so uh, going back to it, this is the Blue Alps stainless steel plate Blue Alps, but inside this plas plastic case. I don't like it as much as I thought I would. I don't know if maybe maybe my concern is not whether or not this case is good, but maybe it's. Maybe it's the plate, or maybe I've just learned to not enjoy Blue Alps as much. I don't know. But I'm, I'm curious to see if um, the PTG plate would be any different. Or the keycaps. So. Gerald T, what's going on? I could hide here. Oh! Moon, I didn't actually finish opening all these packages, have I? Okay, um, so Moon Operator redeemed all of these packages to open, so we're gonna go and do that. Um, here's a here's another fun one. I feel like I need to bring this down even more. This is. Universal Camera Visa Adapter Kit. I don't know how this will work out, but I am curious to see. I, I have like my own current overhead setup, which I like. Um, it's just expensive and, and the sort of stuff that I want to be able to do kind of like requires more sort of more things here that would be expensive, but I'm seeing if this can be a, uh, a good alternative. Let's quickly see this. So. What this is right here is, uh, say you got a monitor arm or something of some kind, um, you just use like you know the the visa mounts on it, and there's this little this little thing here. It's it's like a non from from what I understand here. Yeah, exactly, moon operator. From what I understand, this is like a non-standard. This is like I don't believe that this is Arca Swiss or anything, um, but it's just like something you put you know at the bottom of your your camera that you just kind of screw in. Um, and then this will sort of like lock in as you as you push this tab in this will like lock in here I I don't know uh, this thing has some mixed reviews on Amazon like so it's like you know it hovers around that like four star mark like instead of the four and a half um, Because I think some people say that this this guy might be kind of loose um, but we gotta try it. So uh, I'll, I'll play around with this. I'll see how it goes. And I mean, like if this works, this is like 10 to 20 bucks on Amazon, depending on if you find it on sale or something. Um, but if this works, uh, that's fantastic. But if it doesn't, I'm gonna have to go and, and figure out a situation here because um, I got a couple of mounts here that are like in the, in the range of like hundreds of dollars. Um, and it's like, if I want more, uh, you know, I'm gonna fork out some more, so. Um, We'll play around. We'll play around with them. Gerald T. Damn lot of Alps. Yep. Yep. Always, always gotta have Alps, Alps on deck. 
We're, uh, we're doing a lot more Alps stuff um, looking ahead. Alrighty, next up, package number three. Three out of four here. Let's get it going. Let's get this out of the way. Guys, this is super cool right here. Signature Plastics DCS, like fully clear keycaps. It's like something something that I like I've just had in mind. Now let me let me be real here. I don't like SP DCS. Um, but this is like the best option I could find for clear keycaps right now. Um, so that's gonna be pretty cool. I uh, I'm excited for, for what's in store here. This is gonna be, um, my plan was to put this on an upcoming clear build. Moon, I think we talked about it before. I got this um, Switch Couture Electrotype, um, you know, 60. Um, you know, just a 60% stacked acrylic. Um, so I wanted to be able to put in some clear keycaps on some clear switches in a clear keyboard case. The last part that's really challenging is the fact that there's no, as far as I understand, any sort of manufactured PCB out there that's clear. Um, so I think that that's where um, some some knowledge behind like um, like spaghetti wiring would come in handy, which I, I remember you said that you had some experience on that. So um, I might be reaching out about that, but there's also a chance that like, you know, I don't know if maybe I'll just stick with the, uh, the solid PCB, um, you know, just a DZ60 or some. Uh, I'll just I'll just have to see about that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what's in there. Uh, meanwhile, there's one last thing in here. This guy right here is like it takes me to the promised land. So the Alps party that I bought um, from this like you know seller in Australia here, um, he sold me like a whole ass keyboard that he just dropped into a bubble mailer. Um, and you know, the case got all fucked up, but the keycaps are intact and the plate was as well. Although I don't like the plate anymore. So really what I, <laughs> what it came down to was just basically getting, um, the keycaps for the amount of money that I did, um, which is fine because this is like a DCS Alpine winter, I think pretty hard thing to find. The problem was the DCS Alpine winter keycaps he sent over were um, literally just for a very, very traditional HHKB layout, which is weird in MX because that's what this plate accommodated for, the 6U spacebar. Unfortunately, when I reached out to, uh, to pimp my keyboard slash signature plastics, they no longer had any Alps mount DCS spacebars at all, much less one that would be in this color. But they did say that they had a DSA in the same colorway, GTL in MX. So what I'm gonna have to do here is utilize one of those uh, um, Nexus Alps sliders slash top housings um, for use on whatever switch that I decide to throw on this. In this case, it's gonna be the blue Alps that I'll trans transfer over. So we're gonna go grab one of those when we're all ready and set to go. Um, and, and we'll just sort of do that mod um, as we do it. So um, that way, We'll have this DSA. And, and in fact, I mean, I'm cool with this because um, DCS space bars, what ends up happening is that like the, the front side curves so far up with a sharp ass edge that like I personally have no choice but to flip DCS space bars. I hate flipping space bars, but um, that's, that's the option we have. So uh, DSA, not as flagrant. So, um, you know, we'll be able to do that. The only thing we have to do is just, we're gonna have to use that Alps the Nexus Alps slider, so that's what's going on there. Okay, package four of four is not really a package. Um, so I gotta show you all this just because we're still in the middle of doing all this package opening stuff. Um, but this past weekend, I actually met up with someone for a local, local purchase um, off RMM. Um, and so I ended up getting something that I'm really excited for. Um, so I just wanted y'all to take a look at this. Check it out. Get this out of the way for a sec.
Uh, had to pay reseller prices. That's kind of how it goes. But you know, I really was interested in this. I missed out on the extras. Um, so it's like I basically feel like there was really no recourse. But check this out, guys. Woo! Woo! You got the uh, J02 here, HHKB. Uh, pricey, pricey. Um, it's like there's some issues with the Yano here, but I don't know. Uh, it's it's fine. That's on the interior. I'm cool with it. And I mean, like for me, honestly, like in terms of damages, it's like, like if it's an HHKB, it's a permanent home. So, <laughs> like, um, the exterior looked pretty good as I was sort of poking around looking at it. Um, everything looks good. The interior might have some issues, um, but honestly, I'm, I'm just chill. Yeah, looks real good. Um, I have no idea how to build it. I had heard from Kimchi that it's a really challenging, really weird build. I don't know about challenging, but really weird build. Um, there's some interesting stuff that is in here, like included at least. Um, so we got, what, this JST connector, which I've never built with JST, like to be perfectly honest before. Um, so we got this stuff, this going on here. Uh, we got screws and some little rubber feet that might be for the JST, I believe. I don't know. Or it might be for the board. I have no idea. But here's, here's the weird, interesting part. I guess it looks like there's like these three gaskets so i'm gonna need to like look up the instructions on how to build this because this is like i'm not gonna lie this is a little bizarre to me so we'll have to find out carbon fiber plate i've never used carbon fiber before so i'm, I'm curious to, to sort of see about this um we'll see how this goes and finally the unopened solder pcb hopefully um you know i'm not completely forgetting anything here um, what is interesting to me here is if you look really closely, I don't know if that means this guy right here kind of infers that you can throw an Alps on this. I'm actually really curious about that. So if we could, I don't know if this accepts Alps. So maybe we just toss one in here right now. But even if it doesn't, maybe I could find the, the sort of design file here and then maybe we can cut like an alps plate for this that would be sick as fuck yeah plate doesn't look like it really allows for alps but the pcb does no let me know what you guys think i know it might be a hard look here uh does that look like alps support let me know in chat. But yeah, um, sick. Looks like elves to me. All right on. All right, um, we'll have to look that up. I mean, we, we tried, uh, what was it, last Thursday or so, looking for that PH60. Um, plate design. I actually threw in a message into that saying like, hey, is there any chance we're going to get the design file? I wanted to do some else cutouts. No one's responded yet. So um, we'll see if the J02 has, uh, you know, has any situation going on with with plate files being publicized. That way we can, we can maybe consider whether or not this J02 could become something that houses some helps. So, this concludes the package openings, guys. Thank you for watching that. But now it's time to continue here. So, like I was saying, we threw on this uh, assembly here into this plastic case. Let's just see if we can tell the difference. Does this actually make a difference? Let me know what you guys think here. Uh, 
turn down the music. Versus within this plastic case. I do think it's an improved sound. I'm just not 100% sure I like it yet. Fully. Plastic is greater than alu. I I like I like um you know these like metal cases when it comes to linears, but I I am definitely definitely don't like them um, with clickies, um, and I'm undecided on tactiles as of yet. Sounds thockier on plastic. All right, so we'll we'll try the pet G plate. PTG plate, so um, we'll uh, we'll see how big of a difference that is. But also, we're we're gonna end up seeing if the keycaps make a big difference too. So uh, it's time. So uh, we'll pop off all these keycaps. Man, I need more containers, don't I? Pop off all these keycaps, and then we'll uh, we'll go straight into the desolder and the resolder. Um, What's cool here is we take advantage of this new uh, FM204. I mean, we seldom do. Let's get the music back on. Some people like they like stack them up before they like do this, and I never really thought of doing that until I'd seen it on a stream. So one thing I worry about is um, because the PCG plate's so like flexy, um, is like just just getting together, getting like the the whole assembly together. this and here's the Hasu PCB. I guess unfortunately we haven't really set anything up here so let's go and do that. Appreciate y'all being here tonight. There's that guy. Here's this guy. Think we're good on all the rest of this for now. Might like to have that guy. All right. Guess I gotta plug everything in first. It's been a while. It's always a while. I don't desolder super, super frequently. We try to have fun with it, right? Hard part is always sticking this guy in. There's like a little, there's two things. You have to plug in for power, and then you have to plug in for like suction, I guess. And the suction thingy is like a bit more of a pain to, to plug into the 204 station base. 
than the the power one. New D Saturn gun, nice. Yep, yep. Plug this guy in as well. This guy right here allows for like smart temperature, I guess. I guess you guys can't really see that. Um, Alrighty. Power this fella on. Whoop. Knock around a bunch of shit on my desk. Of course, of course. By the way, for anybody out there, I am selling my FR, what was it, FR300. It's the model pr just prior to the, you know, FR301. Um, so it is like a little bit of an older model, but to be perfectly honest, you can look at the spec sheets, like, I don't think that it's, it's that huge of a difference. There's just some small quality of life improvements, but if anybody here is interested in purchasing, I will give a good deal um, on one. Um, presumably any buyer would be uh, US based um, because it's like a US based connector or like a power. So just throwing it out there if anyone was interested in a desolder gun. Me, I upgraded to this because I like the design of this, how the cables come off the top. It's like a full-on station. Uh, we got a lot more stuff going on where all the electronics are in there. Um, weight is like removed off of here, so you know it's a lot nicer to use. But let's just go at it. But feel free to reach out if anyone's interested in purchasing the FR3 or FR300. This is real nice. You know, I'll uh, I'll turn off this second mic. That way, I don't know how loud that is, but perhaps it'll get quieter on here. So. And you try to make it a little less annoying. And then before we continue, I'll try prying these out just to make sure I'm not completely missing the mark before I go on to the next uh, subsequent rows. One thing I'm curious about um, Spelunk Punk or anybody else who's done with a lot of Alps. Um, What's your preferred methodology for trying to pull the switches off? I remember, I think Epsilon said what he does is he, d he desolders everything. And then he just like pulls off the entire PCB. What I've historically done is like just pry things off with, uh, you know, just a little flathead screwdriver. By the way, also, if anyone should request it, um, I can use a macro lens if anyone wants to see this whole process in macro form, but I'll only do that upon request. I 
I don't want to do it and then like realize that people hate it or that no one was curious and would have rather have seen it from this angle. You know what? The um the plate's so thick that uh it didn't I, I like I don't think it clicked because this is like 1.5. I remember remember getting this cut. Um and like they really only had like this option, like about 1.5 or so. And I didn't realize that this was like a huge problem, but you know, I know now. It's actually, yeah, this is actually not a huge problem, I don't think. So, um, with that said, I'll just keep the, the ball rolling instead of pulling these all off. Maybe we'll see if Epsi's, uh, Epsi's methodology works where you just pull the PCB off. should hopefully not be too slow. I feel like there's like, it's weird. I'm using this uh, 1.6 millimeter nozzle. It's supposed to be real good for uh, Alps, especially, more so than, than MX. I mean, it would also be good for MX, but 1.6 good for that Alps coverage, I guess. Um, but it's just kind of like funny looking at this because every single time I end up like looking at the nozzle for cleaning it up, um, it's almost like there's this little like solder drool coming out of the, the tip. FR series guns will get like kind of tired after a row or so just because I have like these weak ass forearms I know a lot of people what I what I see a lot of people do is they'll do it sideways um, which makes sense uh, maybe that's how people avoid getting tired but um, I, don't know, I like it top down
Should anyone be curious? There's actually a way here. I gotta look for it though. Where uh, this will actually slide off. Is it? There we go. So here's a pen mode. So you can actually use this like a pen. We tried this a few streams ago, um, but it was just like hard to deal with because I didn't have the right nozzle. I, uh, oof, man, I, I feel like I need to get the fan. Um, I usually like feel like I don't need the fan if I'm like not soldering, but I can smell it. So, um, I think, ah, this is weird. It's weird to say, um, cause it's not really a design flaw, but I do kind of feel like the pen, the pen design would be more enjoyable if it were like, if the button were on a different side. But I also recognize the, the button that you use to desolder has to be on the side that it's on um, in order to have the gun attachment work, which I honestly think is probably just the, you know, overall superior uh, option. My goodness, which one's the right connector here? I think it's this one, the one that says keep fire away. Just let's hope it is. All right, uh, with all that said, uh, you're, probably not, you're probably now going to hear all of the, uh, the funny sounds while this fan runs. My voice. So like, I don't know if y'all can see it, but the button is right here. So I have to hold this like wide in order to get the button. It's a little funky. Ah, I blew that. And that's a problem. So I'm not even gonna try this. <laughs> I'm not even gonna continue trying this, I mean. So then there's like an inadvertent presses. It's not as ergonomic. Yeah, yeah. It would be if like the button were on like the side. But I, I can understand how that, like, doesn't really make sense. Much I'll have to clean by this point. I don't know. I, I just got a little worried. I mean, I'm not sure if I should try to clean it right now, right this second, given that, like. The orange tube is not cool, 
It's not hot, I can touch it, but it's like, it's not cool. It's worth a shot. Ton of gunk in here. Give me a second, guys. Do a little cleaning. Just dropped all this shit. That is interesting. There's a fuck ton of like solder on this edge here, which you know, just gotta make sure not to touch my eyes or some shit. Um, but it's like it's so hardened onto this little, I don't know, metal bracket that like sometimes you wonder like how to remove this. And I think I got it. Hopefully that should help a bit. I'm gonna go wash my hands. I'm gonna have to do this like a few times tonight, but we'll go wash our hands and uh, resume this. Alrighty, back to it. Let's suction this out. Ooh, that feels super powerful. We got the power back, guys. Sounds strong, feels strong, all of that. I'm quick with it. wasn't here last Thursday there is a goal here this is another rebuild of this Alps party keyboard but it's possibly nay probably not the last one this build is for a couple purposes one we want to try PTG See how it feels. Um, we also want to see what it, it's going to look like against the PCB. But most definitely it's not the last one because the PTG plate I have, I, I was able to, you know, figure out how to get it cut. Um, but it's not the perfect cut for what I had in mind for this keyboard.
we have an opportunity here to use plate mount stabilizers. Um, but we want to see if plate mount stabilizers is even a good idea in the first place. Alrighty. Soldering is done. Let's see if this lifts off. Fortunately, not as easy as I would have liked. So, let's just come back around. Ooh, some of them already just popped out. Let's just pull these off as we can. It's not bad. Ooh, yeah. Love it, guys. Love it. If we can make it out here without having to like resolder or like come back around, I would love that. Looks like we have a couple of stragglers here. We'll, we'll revisit should we need to. Some of these become iffy. And that might be because we hadn't cleaned out the uh, the filter. Oh, some of these are sad. Bummer. All right. Well, might need to restart a couple of these. I think this is just like one of those you always wish, but it's never the case that uh, it was cleanly desoldered. And that's because you need to ensure that you're continually cleaning out. So um, let's see how we can best arrange this. So a couple, a couple need to come back to. So get this iron on. Uh, hey, this this spool of solder is several years old. This is like close to eight years old, I think. Um, and we're finally coming to a close. I have another one in the back that I bought like last year. I shouldn't even have bought it until I knew this was done, but. So we're gonna we're gonna solder on, we're gonna cleanly add some solder back on to some of these guys, um, in hopes that we can re cleanly re-solder them back on, or desolder them. Pretty good. Whoops. There we go. Couple of these wear. There we go. These like alp switches are very, very flat pinned. Some 
number. There's, there's two, I believe, on this row. gonna have to redo like every you know each pair of pins because I'm not sure which one's gonna be the ones that are problematic That one I think could have been removed and I just didn't try hard enough. So another one right here. Let's make sure we got these. We got this one. On this row and then a bunch of these on this one I think we're good okay try again here there we go much better Cool, cool. This flex goes crazy. Punch this guy through, cleaning pin. days of burning pads man just 
constantly burning pads back in the day. Real good. All right. Toss this. Guys, here we are. Um, whew. you know what's interesting is that I don't need to toss that. I mean, we got this situation here where it's the same PCB. It's a Hasu Alps. So what I could just do is, like, I don't even need to desolder any of that tonight. It's kind of mind blowing. I, I thought I had to. Um. I don't have to desolder any of that. Crazy. It's the same exact PCB. I mean, not, not the same. Not the same, same one, but it's... It's a Hasu Alp 64, just the same. Wow, I'm just like, my mind is kind of blown. I don't even have to desolder those. Okay, um, with that said then, um, I'm gonna go, I have, to, okay, I'm not gonna lie. I really have to rub my eyes right now, so I'm gonna go wash my hands <laughs> again. Um, and then we're gonna go grab some plate mount stabilizers, some plate mount cherry I don't have any plate mount duroc um, I feel like should this work out I will buy some plate mount duroc um, but we can use some plate mount cherry right now we, we're only going to use just one plate mount stabilizer because that's all that this plate that you're looking at is going to accommodate for I, like we're not even going to do one for the, the left shift or the enter um Uh, where was that? I was just messing around with it. Let's check this guy here. I'm so curious about being able to lube and, and use a plate mount stabilizer. I know that they get a lot of shit, but um, you know, I've, I've never actually lubed plate mount. So we're going to, like, I always just hear that it's bad, but I, I don't know. You know? Um, 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 um. I need, I need a brush. I need a brush. I don't know a top for that one, but that's fine. it okay so before we even start to lube let's check out the concept here the idea is i have to get the stabilizer onto the plate before i get the switch onto the plate yeah this will have to be lubed uh you know obviously first um and then once i do that Just snap one of these guys in. Boom. Now we're also gonna need to put on the... Uh... Oh man, I hope that works. This seems very bent, this wire. And I'm not sure if the bend is coming from this ALP switch or not. That just seems bent, period. I need another wire. <laughs> Good thing I'm catching this now. Um, so again, this, this idea here is we we'll also need to go grab that Nexus, the Nexus stuff.
Yeah, this wire is completely bonkers. I feel like I should just throw this away. I mean, this this shit's just bent. But it's like that ain't straight. Like I don't know how you would really like. How do you balance a wire? I have no clue. Hammer it with the hammer. <laughs> Sounds like a. That is an option, I suppose. An option. I make no comment on the quality of that option, but it is an option. Seen people do it with two pliers? Okay. Okay, we need to do some uh, check the flatness on a phone screen. I mean, I, I just... How do I put it? Like, I'm putting it on a desk, and it's like, you could just very clearly tell. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just straight up bent. Okay. Um... Should I, like, I mean, what, what's the word here? Should I just throw it away? Like, what would you even do with this? <laughs> okay, I need to get, like, a nail clipper to clip these uh, little insert legs. Stabilizer insert legs. Gotta clip this. I keep a nail clipper specifically for keyboard purposes. So, for any of y'all may not be familiar, um, I I think I understand now why everyone just likes Duroc stabilizers and, and basically any other stabilizers. Uh, is because these come in pre-clipped and also Duroc V2 specifically have just this better design where, where the wires just don't pop out. But, Part part A is these come pre clipped and we just need to do this so do this off screen um, just so I could do it over a trash can hella the way I clip my nails normally. Just trying to make sure it's all cleaned up. Hopefully this is good. Two pliers from the bend point. One, one thing that has me curious though about plate mount is what is it bottoming out to? Is it still going to the PCB? I guess we'll find out shortly. know is that whenever I clip these it's always like I got some crazy ass edges on this and I mean we'll just hope that it's fine <laughs> all right oh uh, let's see I could show you all that so I clipped them but I like I kind of left these because like I don't know really how to get them out fully Sand it down, maybe. I don't know. See, this, I think one of these, the one on my right hand, might need a little work. 
just like looking at it from this particular profile. This one on the left seems pretty good, but uh, I need to do, do myself a little more of a favor. I just lost my, what can I do with my nail clipper? There it is. Oh shit. All right. Okay. All right. I think we're good now. It should hopefully be okay. I'm hoping. I'm guessing, I'm hoping, and I think everything's fine. Try to cut it at an angle so it's more smooth after I clipped. Yeah. I mean, okay. Let's face it. If this all works out, I'm going to be getting some Duroc plate mount stabilizers anyway. So, <laughs> uh, I think that this, this is really Alps party rebuild number five, nine, two, three, four, five. This is like, you know, really just a proof of concept. So, um, if this all works out, we'll get some Duroc. If this doesn't work out, um, I already have Durag V2 PCB mount stabilizers, which I'm going to eventually use for a an aluminum plate build. So we're gonna we're gonna proceed like everything is gravy here. Um, thing I have to, to verify. This does appear to be a seven U seven U wire. So let's let's go at this. All right. Let's try this out. One thing I'm also separately worried about is how crazy messy BDZ is and how clearly if I fuck up this, uh, it's going to be very, very apparent through this, uh, clear PETG plate. <laughs> so let's, let's, um, hope for the best here. Um, inside um, where the plastic meets the plastic. So we'll go and do that. There's really, there's only two of these to do, luckily. Transition was sick <laughs> on this stream playlist. I also realized I don't think I have the build thing all set up yet, so I should go and do that. Give me a second while I go and verify. Correct. There you go.
move this up both sides make sure we throw it in the proper orientation Good, right there. One more. Clippies. I'll take this wire right here. Very, I don't know how to put it, dirty, dirty wire. I'll just flood the ends here with some BDZ. Again, hope for the best. Proof of concept, proof of concept. you just get in there of course we make this mess because of course why would it ever why would it ever be easy oh my god it's just popping out all right got it in flip it around <laughs> and try it again. Luckily there's only one of these. Only one wire to do. it up again. Also recognizing we never actually did the Nexus Alp stuff. You know what I'm also realizing is that like let me just throw this out there. When you're when you're putting together a clicky build, 
Does a rattly spacebar, like, stabilizer wire even matter? I think about that. It's like, I mean, if your point, if the whole point was to be clicky, to be loud, I guess it's not big of a deal. Yeah, yeah. It's goofy, you know? Like, the more I think about it, it's just, just real silly. Alright, so I'm gonna just take any of these guys. I need my Alps opening tool. I'm gonna just see how the plate mount stabilizers work on the flat. <laughs> You make a solid point there. A very solid point. Oh man, I got lube all over. I got BDZ lube all over my hands. Hold up. Yeah, wash my hands. Number three. Is that number three or number four now? Alrighty, so I've just opened here the, uh, oh boy, oh, I made a mess here, haven't I? Where did this fella go? I think this just goes on whichever end is not being occupied. Okay, so... What I do here is this guy is supposed to just slide on. So I need to put the leaf here on the opposite end. Oh, that's like very loose. Is that supposed to be that loose? I guess so. Shit, I totally missed it. <laughs> I totally missed how this assembly is supposed to work. Um, you should paper mod them. I am not familiar with the paper mod. Is this, <laughs> I feel like this paper mod, put everything into the top housing, then slide the bottom on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one problem is that I literally disassembled this, uh, this switch and uh, missed how it's it's actually the assembly works because I was more concerned with the dirty lube hands that I had. I see. Okay, I see it. All right. Notch the slider. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's what I was, I was thinking that, but just wanted to be certain. Okay. So. Yet like that. Let's throw it on like that. And then there we go. Perfect. I don't know if y'all could hear that, I realize. I didn't turn on the second one, but Nexus, uh, Nexus housing. There we go. Alrighty. So. Let's throw this on. See how this thing works. Watch the BDZ get all over the plate. Ah, it did. Beg for Greg, welcome. Look at this, BDZ getting caught plate mount stabilizers on this uh, clear PETG plate. That's all good. I don't care enough. 
I don't care enough to figure that out. Figure out how to clean that. This is all just a proof of concept anyways. All right, so the next, uh, the next concern that I have um, is figuring out how to get every switch onto this flexi ass plate and then like still have an opportunity here to you don't want BDZ on your fingies so bad uh, well the way I look at it is too late <laughs> oh man I feel like shit I feel like I'm getting it all over all over this plate right now guys welcome beg for Greg welcome oh my god every time I touch the bottom of this plate there's some BDZ there to welcome me you guys ever imagine like since all like Alp stems are just like the same like you could put them into any other like type of Alp switch and then be like hey it's fake blue Alps Okay, so here is my question. Oh, motherfucker. It's like, should this easily just be like pressable down into the PCB? But like, I'll have to do like 60 of these. That's what I'm worried about. That kind of works. Which is like actually really surprising. Like I'm too surprised by that. Like I mean I did like solder them. Like pre like this is in a previous build. Oh my god, my motherfucking I just like building with plastic plates for this reason switches just pop out. So here uh, with Alps, I feel like there's this opportunity here of like, it, it clicks on really nicely, especially considering this is like just the right thickness. Oh my God, what is happening? Just go in, go in you stupid switch. What are you scared? There you go. I got BDZ all over this plate. Not due to thickness, just due to it being flexible. True. We're gonna try to do this. We're gonna try to just get all the switches on and then just see if we can press it through the PCB. It's very, very wishful, but I think, uh, I think the key is to just uh, believe. It's just like, be confident, you know? You know, I'm actually curious. I didn't actually try that thing yet, which is uh, this DSA MX spacebar with the Nexus Alps stem. Maybe we try this out real quick. I'm so scared. I'm I'm too scared of doing it right now. Like, I feel like, how do I get it out? You know. I'm not gonna do it. Too fearful. You know what's also funny is like, when you have a plate, I guess you could do this with any plate, but it would it especially especially makes sense for any non-metallic, flexible, like, 
But it, it could be any play. Is that like, you can mount all your switches onto it. And then you can solder it on to the PCB. You know, and so you have like, you know, it's just, it's just the idea of like having this standard keyboard. You know, it's just like a, a normal keyboard build. But then like you could like cut away at the plate. <laughs> like you could conceivably just like get rid of the plate, especially when it comes to like tray mounting. Cause like you're, you're mounted by the PCB and then you just like, like for, I was thinking about this for Alps because there's no like, there's nothing else on the switch that aligns. Um, you know, to the PCB properly, which means like, you know, you, you need a plate in order to have all your keycaps, you know, make sure that they, they're like aligned properly. But you could just use the plate and then get rid of the plate once it's like tray mounted on. DCS ping master, gonna be hot for sure. I, I feel like I've seen ping master, but I don't know that I was like really, really particularly impressed, but I'm not gonna lie. I don't remember what it looks like. So if any of you guys want to link to DCS Pigmaster, I'll take a look. Tempest, ooh man, I need a new Alps PCB and a plate waiting for something to show up so I could do an orange build. Hey, uh, keep me up. Um, I don't know if they're they're US only or anything. I don't. I, I think there's actually, I think there's actually a buy uh, or like you know you can go to keepmeup.com. I think they actually do international shipping. But they literally just today dropped their 60% PCB. Nice, thank you guys. But yeah, uh, Tempest, welcome and, and check out Keep Me Up. They, they got PCBs in stock today. Literally today, yeah. Um, Spelunk Punk um, pinged about it in my Discord server. I was like, oh shit, I gotta get in on it. I feel like I should have done the stabilizer spacebar last. What a goofy ass idea. Whose idea was that? <laughs> it was mine. There you go. Splunk Punk just dropped that link in. Kind of pricey. It is pricey, but it's like you gotta, you just, you gotta do it, you know? <laughs> Ah, what the fuck? The switch went through the whole plate. Oh my gosh. The lube just getting everywhere. I have a Tai Hao Alp set, so presumably I just get the Alps plate, right? Um, yeah, I, I suppose so. I mean, presumably you could cut any plate, especially if you're doing like some like tree mount. Oh, this is weird, dude. That space bar is worrying me, guys. Just be confident. I don't know how I feel about the flex cut. Motherfuck. One, there we go. I'm not gonna lie, the space bar worries me. But let's just let's see if we could just drop it through. This actually is kind of working, and like I'm like so terribly surprised. I'm just like crunching it through. It's ridiculous. Okay, apparently some of these won't work. 
because they're supposed to be upside down. The, the problem is I gotta figure out which ones are supposed to be. So this bottom row I think is supposed to be upside down except the space bar. Oh man, are those switch legs straight? I, I like, look, I think like, again, I think I could just crunch it in. The problem is like figuring out which ones are supposed to be upside down and which ones are supposed to be right side up. The Dawn 60. I've heard of the Dawn 60. Um, that sounds. It sounds like a really good PCB, but it doesn't look like it's available. Shit, did that actually work? Okay, I feel like there's one... There's some that are not quite correct as of yet. Ow. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> I'm like shocked here. I'm so surprised. This worked. I felt that. <laughs> Again, just crunching it through, you know, actually, actually worked. Guys, I think this is it. Okay, so the idea, I think I'll have to like Wodan this, which I usually do anyways. I think this is, this is key here. Fuck it, let's just go and do this. I think this is it. Yeah, no, I, okay, I'm not gonna lie. I am legitimately worried here that like, the plate mount space bar, like the plate mount stabilizers on the space bar for this guy is just very stupid. And I'm also like, I'm, I'm now wondering if I'm even doing the right thing here. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Huh, let's think here. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Let's, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do it. Um, because if this doesn't work, what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna cut an alu plate and we're gonna use the, um, the green PCB and we're just gonna have to learn how to powder coat, powder coat. Yeah, the PCB has no cutouts for, um, PCB mount stabilizers, unfortunately. So that's that's the biggest weakness with the Hasu Alps. Um, but like the, the whole purpose of, of this exercise is to see how well plate mount stabilizers work with a clear PCB. And if they if they work fine, we're good to go. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get another PCB or I'm gonna get another PTG plate cut that has um, cherry stabilizers for shift and enter and, and that's that's it if this works out poorly what i'm going to do then as an alternative is 
cut an aluminum plate with cherry stabilizers on, on all three of these guys. And then we're going to use the plain 60 or the keyed me up. Um, and then go from there. What about getting a blue PCB made or a blue FR4 plate? Um, whoosh. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, first of all, those are good ideas. Second of all, I, I'm just less familiar. So like if there's like... <laughs> How do you get an FR4 plate cut? Because I think an FR4 plate just makes so much sense. Um, period. <laughs> I have no follow-up to that. <laughs> Getting a blue FR4 plate and then using the green PCB is like... It just, that makes too much sense. And is now making me question why I've done any of this stuff today. <laughs> I guess it's all just experimental. I'm not too sure, but I think you just create the DXF and import into KeyCAD slash Eagle. Okay, so I, I, we can do DX, like I, I think um, Swill's, uh, Swill's Builder just will let you export DXF, I believe. But then like, where would you go? Cause like, like, I don't think Pinoco does like, like actual FR4, right? Like. At the end of the day, like I can, I can. When we have the file. Where do I, like, where do I go to get? Oh, there's. Okay, so I think that's, that's my issue, which is just like, ah, oh, man, that's like more waiting and more, like communication. <laughs> like I, I want to service like. Panoko or send cut send or I just I just plug in my order and then they'll just send it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Here's what we're doing. We'll, we'll we'll just we'll just go along like I didn't. We haven't heard that idea yet. Uh, and proceed from here. Oh my god. I'm trying to like just be so safe with all this hot ass equipment. got all these cables and all of the space that I feel like I should be having is not had. All right, push this back here. not in sleep mode anymore or what? What's going on with all my equipment? Quite sure what has happened here. Uh, my iron is not currently powering on, which is bizarre. Give me a second, guys. I'm gonna figure out what's going on with this nonsense. hot anymore. Did my iron die?
I feel like my iron just died. Uh oh. I saw it briefly power on. Maybe the connector? Yeah, I don't know. Give me a second, guys. Try to resolve this. Okay, I literally just tried plugging it into a different a different outlet and it looks like it's working now. I, I'm thinking, I don't know, a little too much going on on this, uh, this little desk side power strip or like surge protector. Okay, uh, let's just pretend like everything is going really well, which is usually the, uh, the mantra of this stream. Let's just pretend like everything's going really well. Right, guys? Oh, good. Pretty solid to me when I see BDZ on a clear plate. <laughs> yep, yep. Yep, yep. Everything's perfectly fine. That's what I always say. I apologize for some random Discord noises. Wait a second while I put myself on streamer mode. I don't know where that came from. I didn't even see anything new. Very cool. Very cool, guys. So what you're saying, Moon, is that you don't know of any stateside FR4 plate manufacturers. I guess that's that's my main concern here. There is one and it's crazy expensive, all right. Five bucks per square inch. Got some good news though. What's that? Everyone loves good news, right? I don't think there's anyone out there who's ever said, I hate good news. 40% club. What is this? Plate files ready to send to the manufacturer. Oh. Got to adapt it to Alps, put it on the GLC PCB. $17 for five plates in blue. Oh. 
Hmm. Blue FR4, eh? I mean, it sounds like this is probably the way to go over this this ridiculous thing I've been trying to do. I mean... So, oh, uh, ooh, here's a question. What what thicknesses can you get on FR4? Because um, I think, like, you know, you make sure that it's 1.0 to 1.2 millimeters. Can, can you just get any thickness of FR4? One point two is available. Okay. One point two and one point six most commonly in keyboard. Okay. Yeah. Um. Alps requires one point zero to one point two. So that's that's like that's the money there. All right, I'm just going to go through. I mean, I got like all the corners. I got the space bar. I mean, maybe I'll get this middle key right here. I hope I'm even pressing the right one in the first place here. I think I am. All right, let's do this. No predictions tonight. Last time I ran a prediction, no one voted. <laughs> uh, that was crazy. Coolest part of FR4 though is that you can do art with the silk screen. Oh, makes sense. That is cool. Can you like get into like copyright trouble for putting on like PCB art? I guess you could because it's like literally anything. All right, let's go through. What do you mean? I mean, it's like, what if you put a big, like, what if on your PCB you put, like, 6ix9ine's forehead tattoo? Like, that, that 69 design? Then you sold that? Like, I feel like, I don't know, you get, like, a season to assist or something. You like how that was the thing I thought of? <laughs> Alrighty. That guy right there. All right, I think we're good. Whoa, maker mods. Thank you for the big old raid party of nine. Who we got in here? Eno, my good man, Frank, Gerald T. Welcome back, Patness. Oh, thank you, thank you. Warm thoughts. Welcome and thank you for the follow. Uh, Kujo26, welcome. Maker mods again. Nangtendo, thank you for the follow. Elsiba, welcome, welcome, guys. We are uh, 
we were doing a little proof of concept board here. Make her mod think for the follow also. I have to follow him back here. Let's get that in there. Follow. Just give you a follow there. Mans is contracting Twitch to babysit his kids. <laughs> hey, shouts out everybody. And shouts out to uh, Maker Mods for the big old raid. We are doing here. We're 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 doing a number of things here, guys. Check this out. Um, proof of concept board. We have here a clear PETG plate with one cutout for um, cherry stabilizers um, and we're gonna test out whether or not this this just makes sense problem is this PCB doesn't have any PCB mount cutouts for the cherry stabilizers so we have opted to use some some old cherry like some actual like like OG cherry plate mount stabilizers I believe that this is what this is from so we put some BDZ on the stabilizers and we got some BDZ all over the clear plate of course that's what'll happen um we're just we're just trying to see how well this will all work out when it comes to blue alps on a ptg plate when it comes to using plate mount stabilizers which i've never lubed before um and we're just gonna see how this all works out now meanwhile uh moon operator came in with this brilliant idea of like why am i even doing this in the first place because i should just try to get like an fr4 plate cut for the specifications that I want it for. So, uh, <laughs> it's a little funny, a little funny situation that's kind of like rolled out uh, in this fashion, but you know, we're just pushing forward like everything is, is completely fine. Um, so, um, as with any sort of clear plastic plate, um, there's a lot of care needed in, uh, needed to be taken so we pushed in all of the, the switches in first or into the plate first then we just smashed in the pcb now i'm kind of like whoa dan soldering all of these uh all of these joints in all these switches in so uh let's see patness i hope you're doing well uh, i'm doing good really wanted to get this build in tonight it's a little surprise stream on my end um yep maker mods this is skcm uh um, complicated blue alps uh, we're gonna throw it in a plastic case i think clickies and tactiles sound really good in the cheapest possible plastic cases so. um, but maker mods thank you for the uh, the big raid and i uh, hope you have a good night uh, appreciate you bringing along your community and everybody who else who, who came along um, i'm glad you guys uh, all came along i watched maker mods because now you guys all get to be here so appreciate it y'all um, all right, fan back on, uh, we'll continue along with this. One row at a time, and then we'll push through all of the switches each row we go in. I think once we get towards the middle, it's probably less critical because I, I can just see that like all of these um all of the legs come through the holes like pretty tall but we're, we're still gonna do it why the hell not you know Maker Mods new did his very first uh, affiliate stream day. Hey, right on. Knows a bit about Alps, so I thought you should raid tonight. Since we're on. Hey, appreciate that, Frank. Thanks for looking out. Give it up for Frank, everybody. Hey, Frank, shout yourself out if you haven't already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, push these through. Looks like it seems pretty good. Hey, <laughs> thank you, Pat. Let 
Yeah, all of these are like solid at this point. I think just these edges are just the ones that really needed to be pushed in. Hey, I would say like, to be perfectly honest, we're making pretty good time tonight, I gotta say. Hey, shouts out, Pat. Thanks, Tendo. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. And shout out everybody. Everyone just shout out yourself. The shout out command is like open season here. <laughs> follow Pat. I, I I think I do follow Patness. I I gotta follow Warm Thoughts to see that right now. So many people to follow, yo, yo. I gotta say, man, it's like, what's, what I think is really interesting is like, keyboard streams are like crack, man. <laughs> hey, shouts out me. If you ain't already know. Gotta give everybody follows. Puja, do I follow you? All right, I will give you a follow too. Hey. Press my iron against one of these cables. All good though. It's a little closer to this guy. Push all these guys in, but should already all be good anyways. It's gravy, man. Everything here great already. So good. So good. Love your piercing. Hey, appreciate that. I'm actually, um, Ada and I are gonna go celebrate a couple of uh, things. One being fully vaccinated, finally, uh, at least on my end, as well as uh, June 9th, 6 9 day. We're gonna go celebrate by getting some piercings. I think I'm gonna get an industrial. She's gonna get a septum. June 9th, yes, 6 9. Everybody else should go celebrate 6-9 too. 
It's like the greatest of the holidays. <laughs> Industrial, it's one of those, uh... It's like at the top of your ear, like the ear cartilage, but it's like one of those like double piercings where you have a bar just running through um, the two holes. I'm deathly scared of piercing. <laughs> those are sick, yeah. I've, I've been meaning to get one for a long time. I, I always thought they were very cool, um, but you know. I always like held it off and then like it got held off even further because of COVID and all. But I'm um I'm trying, I'm trying to just like train myself. I think, you know, I, and I've mentioned this in previous streams, but like I've been very COVID phobic, so I'm trying to train myself to be less so now with everything, especially like having been vaccinated. Six nine, you mean the sixth of September, right? <laughs> all right, these are all pe pressed through. These all look good, level, even. Um, I'm just gonna go and finish this now. Um, this should hopefully be good to go. I uh, don't have to worry about much else. So um, let's just let's just get a move on. HHKB layout, 60 switches, 60 joints left to go. Let's do it. Uh, meanwhile, still just like mulling it over in my head. It sounds like I should just get a, an FR4 PCB done, or FR4 plate done in this particular layout. Um, I could do it maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, I'll, I'll see. I'm still thinking about things. It feels like the move, though. Keep me up Alps or playing 60 Alps. You can throw on that, uh, like, either of those, like, you know, the black or the green PCBs that already exist. I think the plain 60 Alps might be open source, so I could also get one of those done. Um, should I figure out how to actually get PCBs done? Yo, what Alps are you using? These are SKCM Complicated Blue Alps. I'm about to throw it in this uh, plastic blue case, I think. Cheap plastic cases just sound really, really good with like clickies and tactiles. Carbon fiber is a great plate material, uh, Alps too. Huh. Damn, we've been... I gotta try some of these, man. Crazy. What play material do you currently have? This one right here in this build that uh, you know I'm working on right now. This is um, PETG plastic. It's just like a clear plate, so it's like showing through this blue PCB. Can't wait to hear the Alps. Yeah, hey, we almost done. Almost done here. Typically um, on these Alps builds, I, I have not cared much for um, even stabilizing left shift or enter but like it's like what I've come to realize is that well if you have an opportunity to you should but not if it like is just so damn readily now here's another funny thing I was posing this as a little existential question here is that in any clicky build does a smooth stabilizer even matter like, if you were using clicky switches anyway, why does rattle, like, why would reducing rattle even matter? Let me know what you guys think. With helps, I, need, I think you need space to reverb.
Let's hear more of the switch sound and less of the stabilizer sound. Oh, fair. Fair. That's true. I become very rattle phobic. I want to hear the clickies, not the stabilizers. Definitely matters less. <laughs> Realizing I'm soldering at the bottom of this screen. Try to get it more in line with y'all. far forward play why the hell did i not think of that idea like i was thinking of like oh man should i get like a an aluminum plate or a steel plate and then powder coat it and like i have to go get the plate cut and then i have to figure out a powder coating service i'm like why the hell would i not just do blue fr4 it's like what the hell was i thinking i guess the big the biggest issue there is just coming up with like well how how do I go and do it? But if Moon says it's easy, it must be easy. Found a better manufacturer, posted details in Discord. Okay, right on. All right. I think that just about wraps this up. 65 made and shipped with DHL for five pieces. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Five. Would I use five plates? All right. Can you get it for four plates cut from PCB suppliers or not quite? Uh, I mean, I, I guess that's the case, uh, but the thing is, I just don't know. Treat it as if you're making a normal PCB. Alps, 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 Alps. All right. So here is my clear plastic case or sorry like my, my blue plastic case there it is you can see the blue just kind of come through but you know it's it's a clear plate it's not jlc pcb is it <sighs> let's see okay so a couple things here I am going to put that away real quickly. Get these screws in. I'm just losing about everything here. Where is that? Charge extra for a blue 1.2 or 1.0 millimeter plate since it's not standard PCB way. Huh. Is that also not stateside? No, all in China. Alrighty. Check for the quote done in the US. I mean, it's fine. Like I, I don't have a problem going overseas for it. It's not like I don't have any like xenophobia or anything. It's more just like difficulty or like ease of ordering. <laughs> I think it's, yeah, it's literally ease of ordering because I figure like any powder coating place if I was like to do this, you know, send in a, a keyboard plate feels like, uh, you got to go and explain it. <laughs> they only do purple. Whoa. I don't hate the idea of purple. Fuck me. in with some tweezers. Fuck. Damn. What am I doing? Oh, 
I'm blowing it. No, no, no. Get in there. Yeah. Center correctly. There you go. Whew. Oh, that was scary. Scary for a second. Instant quote. Wanted to have some PCBs made locally in South Africa. They wanted to charge me something like $100 for a single PCB. That's pretty expensive, damn. Turnaround time was somehow worse than JLC PCB. Got one more screw. One more screw on this right hand side. All right, this right here is moment of truth. Putting on this uh, MX space bar onto this uh, this sort of Alps situation. Will it work? My diagnosis is no, not really. Uh, it kind of does. It actually kind of works. Looks kind of warped. It does, doesn't it? It kind of works. PBT or ABS? I'm not gonna lie. I have no idea. I, I literally just bought it off to my keyboard. Let me let me check. Uh, DSA spacebar, pack of one. So as a seven units GTL. I believe GTL is uh, gotta be an ABS, which is weird. Cause like, why would it warp, right? Cause DCS Alpine winner, or so yeah, DCS Alpine winner was, was ABS double shot. Let me send this over to y'all. Looks warped to me. Now, here, let me try. I'm gonna try pulling it off. That's what. That's what I'm scared of. Pulling it off is what kind of worried me. Like the idea of pulling it off because, like, it's a pet G PCG plate. Ah, it came off. Oh no! <laughs> the whole damn stabilizer piece came out of the plate. <laughs> Alright, we got it. Alright, it actually clipped back in. Okay, so check this out. Like, I was worried about this, and then I got, like, more confident that this wouldn't happen, but now I'm re-worried. So, your question is, is it warped? It kind of looks a little bit warped. Let me see if it turns exposure down a little bit. It looks a little warped. Now, you guys said that that might have looked like that even prior to me throwing it on. Let's see, let me turn it around this way. Yes, warped. Do you have another? No, I don't. What if I just bend it? <laughs> Definitely pre-warped. Heat gun? I don't have a heat I have like a hair dryer. Well, here's here's my concern is take a look at this guy. Um, so 
we got this like MX Alps like adapter. This is the Nexus Alps, um, you know, stem plus housing. Um, but this like elevates pretty high up over um, where the plate mount stabilizer is. I don't know how well you could possibly see that. So I think that this is like kind of a little bit of an issue. Um, I don't know. What if I just bend this? <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna try to throw it on again. Heard that Nexus slider doesn't work well with the clickies. Mm. Style keepers, are you here? Check Discord. <laughs> let's, throw, let's try to throw this on. Let's do it again. There's a sluggishness. There's like a slight, and I'm not sure if it's due to the warping necessarily. But like, it's a little slow to return. I don't know if you guys can see that. It feels slow to return. That's a bummer. Maybe I just need to buy like 50 more of these. These are like $8 space bars. I don't know if you guys saw that. <laughs> buy out their whole stock of these GTL space bars, see which ones are warped and which ones aren't. But I'm also like wondering like, is there a chance here that um, these switches just aren't heavy enough? To like really be fully supported for uh hmm. should i throw a brown alps in there just for the hell of it to see because like i think brown alps are pretty heavy right my key puller I was going to suggest a heavier spring too. Can you just transplant spring? Uh, the thing about uh, Alps is like, I, I don't know that you can really just do spring swaps because I think the heaviness comes from like the leaves, the heaviness, like like the actual weight as well as the, um, the feel. Surprisingly enough, uh, box switch springs work. Oh, fortunately, I don't have any box switches. Just way heavier preload, apparently. Interesting. Interesting. So, ooh, with all of this. I actually do. I, I think the the honest truth is just as I'm trying this out, is um, I really don't know if I like complicated blue Alps as much as I once did in a previous life. Some dirt in there. Damn it. <laughs> I 
I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I throw in a... Uh... Should I throw in a Brown Alps as a space bar? Is Brown Alps known to be like heavier than Blue Alps? The Blue Alps won't keep the space bar up. It's like, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent certain whether it's the fact that it's Blue Alps or if, um, you know, possibly it might be because of this, the warpness on the space bar. It is a 7U space bar. Damn, some of these are like real tight on here. On, <laughs> on this plate to really muck this up. Oof. Slashing at this point. Alrighty. Damn, it's like, I think like a big problem with going this route, um, especially, I, I don't know if it's a mixture, like, like what combination of, is it because it's, um, like a flexi plastic plate versus it's the use of plate mount stabilizers, but like pulling off this like plate mount stabilized you know, space bar keycap is like, that's a huge disaster, I gotta say. board guys that DSA space bar that's like it's just got some slowness to return I like how there's no rattle though I don't hate it. I don't hate it as bad as I thought I would, but um, I do think that brown alps just kind of sound a little bit better. Let's see if I turn this on. That is clicky. You know, so here's my thing. I I've never tried uh, box box switches like box clickies, and I, I actually am curious about them. I. I don't know, I've, I've like heard sound test videos and I imagine they're just like a lot louder, deeper, and just like a bigger sound. 
Um, and I wonder how they compare to, compare to complicated blue elves because I feel like before box switches existed, I, I thought that these were like among the best clickies, but I, I don't, I just don't know how they compare. So, um, space bar, space bar is just like, damn, is that a problem? So I don't need to like nexusify like a whole nother brown op switch and then switch that out. I have to take off all these keycaps to get the screws out and do this all. I feel I can hear that. Box clickies definitely hit different, but it feels more binary, if that makes any sense. Hmm. Man, I gotta try them out. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Take a listen to this. This right here is the B key. Here's the space bar. There's also, you know, this this reality of like, there's also the nexus part that I think is removing a lot of the click sound. But I think it's it's it might be the like the weight of the switch can't keep the space bar up. So I'm wondering if you have to like bend the leaf or something. So, I mean, unless anyone uh, wants me to make any changes here, I'm wondering if we should just go run towards this uh, this little type test we got. It's funny here, this flexi tray mount plate. Even though spacebar isn't there yet, it still sounds so good. Look at this, I gotta show you guys this. It's a flexi tray mount plate and um, it's like because it's tray mount, like I mean like the edges, like it's it's mounted and it's in the way that it is. It's like I got these blocked corners on the plate and it's just like you could press it down and it just flexes. It's just pretty funny. <laughs> Try that other one. I don't know, I, I just find that like amusing. <laughs> Alrighty, um, I guess let's just go get this type test going on. I feel like it's fine. It's fine. get on a prediction I look I my, my times are up and down like crazy so uh, we'll just go with like 120 cameras in focus ah thank you guys for that Let's go 122. I think we did this last time. I am caps locked right now. What the hell is this build? Oh my god. Okay, you know, there's a real problem here. Which is... Uh, I haven't flashed this PCB, I guess. <laughs> uh. Hmm. I have this somewhere. Give me a sec, guys. We're, we, we can do this. Because I flashed the other one. Like I flashed the one that was on this build. Um, so. Um, 
We'll keep that prediction going, but the actual test might not be for a little bit. Give me a second, everybody. Can these guys be programmed by USB? Whoa, that's cool, that little icon. I feel like that icon seems new. <laughs> um, yes, the answer to that is yes. I just have to remember how exactly. Um, let us see. I think I have and also need QMK. Shit, that, damn it. That is not as smooth as I wanted it to be. I thought that was ready to go. Not wrong. Hold on. I'm a little confused here. Um, <laughs> give me a second. Two. Where'd my mouse go? So I have QMK here. Um, I should also have, I literally have this guy right here. Sorry, but no, yeah, no worries. So I think I need to figure out two things, how to get it into bootloader mode, um, as well as, uh, oh my, oh my God. Uh, Hasu Alps 64 Flash. Like I need to figure out. Unfortunately, I don't see enough information on the PCB to like immediately know. Okay, let's check this out. Can we read what's on that ship? <laughs> I feel like with enough light, I can just read it without having to find out. Mega 32U2. Hey, I don't have to do any, uh, any crazy Google shit here. Maybe it just said it here anyways. Uh, 32U2, all right, perfect. Fantastic 2020 vision, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so for some reason, this is reading that I have the, the KMAC plugged in. I'm gonna unplug that. Ugh. Fuck me, okay. All right, TMK Alp 64, keyboard start. Do it, can I just flash it or do I need to have done it? There are no devices available because of course. Uh, I just hold this button and then plug it in.
Alrighty. Let's try this. Flash. What the hell is this? I don't know what that is. I just hope that Alps 64 underscore VF dash five is actually something that works. I I make no guarantees that it is something that works. I also might have just wanted to use that Unimap thing anyways. Uh, Was it Unimap 1? Hey, okay. <laughs> I think that that was it. good okay sorry for the big delay everybody um, okay perfect perfect so with that said oh big out of focus go guys we finally got our shit together <laughs> took long enough alrighty so what I think the prediction was was a thousand points for for one side so if I if I blow it there's no winners and those thousand points go into the abyss so all right guys I realize I'm typing on this on this mat here or whatever. It's a cheap plastic case. All right, if y'all are ready, what keycaps are those? These are DCS Alpine Winter, albeit uh, these are Alps keycaps. But this uh, G or this this DSA spacebar was just picked up separately. Um, my understanding is it's a color match. It looks to be a color match. Um, but it's a different shape. Also, it takes MX mount, so I had to use a Nexus, a Nexus Alps. Now, I, me, I want to have that DCS 7U spacebar that was supposed to come with this set, but the person who sold it to me did not include it. So uh, it's just how how things go, and it's fine. Why don't you use a DCS spacebar? So the one the one that he sent me. Um, the only one that was included was a 6U spacebar, which just like is crazy. Like I find this super crazy. This plate right here is like 6U, perfectly 6U compatible. Like there's nothing, there's no other compatibility on this plate. So I'm just confused. Like why would someone get a plate cut like this? Second of all, I'm super, super surprised that like the Hasu Alp 64 PCB actually has traditional HHKB layout support instead of like an MX HHKB support, or, which it does, but it's just like, that's so crazy that they would put that in. I don't know. Just, just my two cents. <laughs> Anyways. All right, guys. Let's get it. Let me know if you guys can hear this all right, but we're going to go and do it.
Ooh, 122! <laughs> as far as I know, the uh, Infinity keyboard uh, supported 6U, hence there was compatibility. Ah. Hey! <laughs> Holy fuck, my heart. <laughs> Speed racer. Hey, Rolly, Rolly, welcome, welcome. Sounds nice. Never thought I would uh, appreciate a clicky. Consistency is key. I bet 500. <laughs> Wait, did you bet 500 on the other? Or on, on the under? Hey, everybody. Choose outcome. 122 or more. Hey. Congratulations, everybody. <laughs> guys okay so i'm not gonna lie okay there's a, a few things a few takeaways here a few takeaways from tonight's stream one the first takeaway is i thought that this would go this stream would go on for longer because i thought that i was going to have to um desolder all these switches from this assembly here the thing about this assembly is that like I got brown alps on this plate. It's dirty as shit. I got brown alps on this plate, this stainless steel plate that's about 1.5 millimeters, which is too thick. Um, so this plate, I think I'm just gonna junk. Uh, as much as I like the blue, um, I think that there's there's too many things wrong with this, like the 6U space bar, um, as well as the, the fact that it's too thick. Um, but I didn't have to do anything, at least for tonight. Because as it turns out, like, the the thing that I was desoldering here was the same PCB. So I'm just like, well, I don't have to do anything. So uh, all, my entire desolder job um, to get the Blue Alps out of what was it, or what it was already in was the same thing I could just put it back in. I was just doing a plate replacement. Um, so that's that was cool. Um, but second of all, uh, you know, there's there's more learnings here. Um, I nexusified the the spacebar switch uh, so that I could try using this MX spacebar um, for the purpose of utilizing cherry plate mount stabilizers. First of all, the plate mount sta stabilizers. I feel like we got some issues here. It's some combination of the fact that it's plate mount. Plus the fact that it's a flexi plate means that like every time I'm going to try to pull off this space bar key means that the the whole stabilizer plastic piece could just pull out. And of course, I, I can just plug it back in, hopefully. Um, but it just seems like enough of an annoyance that I'd be like, I don't know that I want to go with this this setup in particular. What's cool is that, like, because it's clear, I can go and see through what's in the PCB while keeping the PCB relatively protective, uh, protected, as well as, you know, serving as a plate to keep all of the switches aligned and having, you know, a plate to begin with. Um, I don't know, though. Um, the the fact that like the space bar can't even really be held up by the switch though also concerns me and i'm curious to see if like maybe if i put in a heavier switch like a maybe brown alps if it is if brown alps really is heavier would I actually do anything for this i don't know that it would but apparently um there's a note here that i think spelunk punk mentioned was that a, a box switch spring might actually work in here um for for weights but we'll we'll kind of just have to see um I love you 143. Thank you for the follow brother. Do you know Undertaker? Like the guy or is uh, Undertaker in what context? <laughs> um <sighs> Moon Operator had also suggested here that we just use an FR4 plate. Um so I think I I might want to go with an option like that, but I think I might have to figure out how to do that. 
Aquarius 9991, uh, could I get a quick sound test? Yeah, for sure. Um, I assume I might have missed the, the test, but uh, we can just go for another quick short one. Let's go like a 30 seconds. All right. Uh, hopefully you could hear this. Let's uh, let's get at it. Holy moly, brother, you type like XLR8. Goddamn, SKCM blues are easily my favorite clicky. They are so unique. <laughs> okay, like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, um, I don't have much to compare this to. I don't have, like, a like an MX blue or, like, an MX clicky ready to go. Um, I've never tried a box clicky. I have some clickies in the pantry that are not MX related, which, I don't know. Personally, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I think I like some of the other ones a little bit better than this. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'm crazy. Maybe that's a little blasphemous. I I'm not sure. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, like, I, I have a Model F clicky. I have a Model M clicky. Um, I also even have Matthias uh, clickies, which I think in that, like, stock build, I actually quite like. Maybe I'll go pull it out and just do a little, little tiny comparison. Um, I'd like to be able to compare some of these though. Um, I eventually do want to put in blues, like cherry blues into something. Um, just eventually at some point. I'm not in any rush. God dang, I feel like my pantry just gets like clean and then messy and clean and then messy. All right. I'm liking the Dippin' Dots shirt. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, maybe Defense is asking if you're Aquaman. All right. All right, so I'm not gonna lie, right, right off the bat, like, look, I, you guys like this. I mean, it's like, it's cool. Like, it's chill. Um, here's this. Um, Here's this guy right here. This is Matthias's like, I don't know if you call this like a 75%. Um, here's the sound. Honestly, I like this. And honestly, I'm not sure, but I think I might like it a little bit more than SKCM Complicated Blues. I don't know. I, I don't know what you guys think. Maybe maybe my blues, I don't know if my blues are like, I don't know, need some work. Totally different tone, yeah. Too loud for me, not my thing. It sounds too much like buckling to me. Okay, fair. Um, but yeah, I got some buckling springs in there too. I, I like this. I wonder how many other like uh, Alps clickies are out there other than these blues. Excuse me. That 75 is is unique. I look. I like it. Uh, I, I, I like the way it types. Um, for anyone here who might not know me, uh, I don't use anything other than HHKB layout boards. Or, like, I don't enjoy using anything besides HHKB layout. So it's like, as much as, like, I like how this sounds, like, acoustically, like, sonically, it's, it's cool, but, like, I, I just, like, I won't use this. <laughs> It's like it's a it's a pre-built board and I have nothing against pre-built boards other than why can't more of them be an HHKB layout? <laughs> Let's 
pull this off so we can take a look. Oh my. I have an HHKB layout waiting to be built, but like I'm really excited to, to learn the layout. Yeah, I love it. Um, and I think like also it just could be the case too. Like this case, the way that this case is just kind of built, it's like it's a glossy plastic. I don't know if it's acrylic or just some other glossy material, but um, I'm guessing for what the material is and maybe the way that this is built um, and, and constructed, I again, I like it. So, I kind of feel like I could keep it at this ISO, but I don't know, it's just because it's white keyboard here. Now I, again, like, I also just wish that I had a MX Blue, like an MX Cherry Blue, or just whatever cheap Razor Switch or whatever cl cheap clickies are out there to compare this to. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have any of those on hand, so. I do like the top row. Opera is really nice. Alrighty. Guys, there's always a couple things I do after the type test. And tonight will be no different. Let's just fucking do it. Guys, we got a couple things to do here. Fuck me. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the ritual has begun. Yeah, my head's a bad. Thanks for the stream. Hey, Moon Operator, thanks for coming by. As always, appreciate you being here. What is this sorcery? This is uh, one of the harder, one of the more difficult typing games I've played because of the completely unnatural rhythm, unnatural rhythm that you have to type at, and your ability to have to look at two different places at once. Requires a lot of coordination. Fuck. <laughs> All right, one more, one more. Five. Jesus. Okay, no more, no more. All right, next one up. Next and final one, the thing that'll take the longest. Bookmarked. <laughs> All right, typing two to five, guys. Nineteen ninety one. Okay. Today, date. Uh, today's date, uh, June seventh, twelve. All right. I would love to go through all the lessons and shit, but like I can't, it's just so hard to deal with the double space after period. So what I usually play, Letter Invaders. so good oh I, I, I forgot let's just run this prediction here 
start prediction. Okay. Um, let's let's change this. Last time around, I, I I think we aimed a little too high. Um, so let's do this. And let's run this for five minutes. No. Two. Five. Five. Two. Two minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> okay, guys. Will I hit? Will I break ninety thousand points? Last time we ran a hundred thousand points, that was too high of a goal. I've only ever broken hundred thousand once. So I'll run this. You guys can sort of make your guesses when you guys would like over the next five minutes. Oh god. Eduardo Farkas. Taxi? Oh shit. Oh shit. Taxi plane? Chronometer. Oh god, chronometer. Mega there? That real word? Let's make this spicy. Okay guys, for those of you guys, okay, I feel like I should also explain the rules of this game. So, uh, it, like, it should hopefully be obvious. The, the, the idea here is that it's kind of like Space Invaders, but like, you know, it's just like, you got this city here at the very bottom. Let me let me move this over a little bit because I think I'm blocking some of it. All right, you got the city here at the bottom, and like if any of the words or whatever letters, whatever those strings are, actually touch the bottom, I lose that portion of my city, and I just have to make sure that I keep some part of my city. If I, you know, if all my city is gone, that's when I lose. But it's also important to also like realize there's another there's there's other wrinkles in this game. Um, one of the big wrinkles is that as soon as you typo, um, you you like exit out of that word, but you also lose points. So it's like I could typo a million times, and it's just like I have to keep making up ground for those points that I've fucked up when I've typoed. Um, so I just want to throw it out there. Also, another thing is like among anything that shows up on the screen like they'll not like I, I, as far as i understand none of them will start with the same character because you need to know which one actually like what word or, or thing that drops down you're actually referring to so it's like if i hit a w on accident um and there happened to be a w a word that starts with w on the screen then i have to continue with that word even if i didn't even know it was there so it's just like there's a lot of wrinkles in this game, so I just want to point that out. Bull. God, what is this? Woo! Woo! So stressful, I am stressed. <laughs> That's an interesting way to spell that. Oh no! Five, three, nine, six, five, eight. No! Oh my god! Oh my god, this is bad. Oh my god. 
Oh, I fucked up that long ass zip code. These long ones are like real bad. Like those are the ones you gotta focus on. Can you change the difficulty? Well, yeah, I think I'm like at the hardest mode, which is like full keyboard. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Slick! Slick! What the fuck? The drip is linear! Fuck! Lagoober, hey, what's going on? Oh, another thing too about this game is that um, when you've lost your city on one, you know, column, you can kind of ignore anything that falls there. <laughs> so it's like, that's kind of a cheat. But then they kind of know that and accommodate for that. get it. I really need to learn his hedge type properly. Uh, I don't even think I do it properly, but you just... I think it's just, uh, you gotta try. <laughs> oh no! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is so terrible! Okay, okay. We're getting close, we're getting close. Oh, 
I can't do that. I can't do that word, man. It's too fast. Train on this game two hours a night. Surely I'll get there. <laughs> Alright, gotta focus on the left side. Almost there, almost there. The daytime- man, there's some shit in here that's so cool. There's sometimes fucking SSNs in here. It's like ridiculous. Oh my god. There. Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. Oh, I hit 90. I hit 90. <laughs> social security numbers? Yes, there is social security. Okay, okay. So, I don't have much life left, but, like, the thing is I have to make sure not to, like, keep typoing. Because, like, that's how I'll lose points. Can we hit a hundred? Can we hit a hundred? Oh shit. Whoa! This game is broken! <laughs> Everything broke! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I think my machine crashed. <laughs> Whoa! What happened? Bro, right before I hit a hundred, it's like I think it has like a little stop there at a hundred. Like, hey, if this person hits a hundred, his hundred just break your whole OS. Man, I'm hooked on the Flappy Bird game shit. <laughs> uh. Alrighty, guys, that about does it for me. Um, Moon, I think he is already off, but. Um, I'm going to reach back out to him. I'm going to look up some of this information on the uh, the uh, the FR4 plates. And I think that that's the way that we're going to go um, down the line for this. Um, but I also think I have to figure out something about getting these stabilized keys just right. Um, because that's a little fucked how uh, yeah, we have an issue with the return. So um, at least on the space bar. It's a little, little tiny bit sluggish. What was this game called? This is Type Being Tutor 5, Letter Invaders. Uh, I think that's what the, the mini game is called, but um, if anyone's curious, I remember it was called, um... hold on, give me a second, give me a second while I, I'll find out some more information. Um, one second here. Vitaswear. If you guys are at all trusting of a site called Vitaswear.com, uh, <laughs> I know it sounds 
super, super sketch. Um, but I'm going to send this anyway. Vetusware, it's like some, it's an archive of something they called abandonware, which is just like stuff that might still possibly be under copyright, but like very clearly everyone has abandoned this, um, you know, like software is like this person and, and like there, there is like a lot of catalogs of this. People try to just go and collect shit that was just abandoned. Um, Typing Tutor 5 is no exception of just something that just got left in the past, so um there's a situation here for that so they they kind of like tell you to run dos box and then um, this is how you sort of get it going um me i just went and took took the risk you know it could be malware it could be whatever it is but um you know as far as i can tell i feel relatively safe as for where it is um so that's that's kind of where we are here that's how we run Letter the letter invaders middle uh, mini game in typing tutor five. Alrighty, I'm pretty tired. I gotta clean up all of this stuff. Like I need to clear out the uh, the gun. Um, so, um, gotta do all that. Figure out what the hell happened with all this this power stuff. But um, let's check to see who's online. See who we could raid. You focus on, I think. Uh, row row keyboards. I think that person came in to follow um, the other night, um, but I don't. I don't think I've uh, given this person um, a chance yet. So uh, we'll we'll go. We'll go and do this. Row row's great. Right on. Right on. I feel safe since you feel safe. <laughs> All right on. Okay, guys. Uh, as per usual. Um, my closing statements here. Um, Discord, if anyone's interested in, in joining along uh, for the Discord, uh, for any updates, uh, discussions on all of this stuff. Ben and Sarah are around this guy. Hey. Uh, so yeah, uh, updates, clips, voice chat, all that. Um, feel free to jump into the Discord if you're at all interested. Um, bunch, bunch more things here. Uh, website, I recently relaunched my website, which contains my collection, I'm gonna put in uh, this keyboard uh, as soon as we sort of update this, as well as the J02 um, as part of it um, with some updates. Uh, so check that out. Um, another couple of things here. Um, I also provide a film, a photo film development service. So if anyone has any photo film um, or knows anyone that's interested in a service like this, I offer completely, I, I think very competitive rates uh, so check out the details there. Um, and then finally, bits and subs I send to the San Francisco Marin Food Bank. Um, but if you want to donate directly to them, uh, check out that link. That's my page where I drop in all my donations as well. So um, I just put in um, April and May, um, you know, I think last late last week. Um, but also on top of that, uh, subscribing, we, we have uh, some more benefits to that too, which is I, I recently added a couple of new emotes um which uh i'll display here so those are my all all my consistent announcements i always usually go and say so um guys i i think i'm gonna try streaming tomorrow um i might be some photo film stuff actually just like development or scans uh, I'll, I'll just need to to figure it out um but yeah uh until probably tomorrow if not tuesday um good night from san francisco uh, we're going to be raiding uh, row row keyboards. All right. Good night, guys.